Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about the lesson that we learned in how to safely conduct changes at Google. I did this work when I was intern at Google along with many other authors. So cloud providers need to provide a wide spectrum of deployment archetypes ranging from like a non-replication version like within a single zone to a zonal level replications but still within a single geographic regions and also to a more sophisticated version that piecing together multiple regions. To provide high availability, the cloud provider needs to provide high baseline availability for each zone, saying for nice availability. And this is especially important for those non-replicated users. The cloud also needs to provide a, a, the failure domain isolation to avoid correlated failures across zone. Otherwise, the user's replication effort can become useless. So give, to give you some sense of like what we mean by four nines availability, it really means that about like four minutes downtime per month. This also means that if a human is involved in mitigations, it's highly likely we cannot meet with the budget. So there are among all the factors, like networking is a baseline dependencies for all other services and is particularly important for the availability. Many studies, including our own, has found that Network management operations is actually the major triggers for the outages. <coughs> Over half percent of the cluster network outages are resulted from the management operations in the past few years. Um, this does make sense, right? If you don't touch your network, you know, it's less likely to really causing uh, some, 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 some pro problems. Um, however, Google has this business needs that require need the, the touching the network on a pretty much continuous basis. And this table shows like the example category of like the measurement operations at Google. You don't have to look into all the details, just look into the middle column here shows that what are the average frequencies that need to be conducted like per cluster. Imagine there are so many clusters in Google, like it's really, uh, the, there's, the, the frequency is really high for the operational changes. So there are many known best practices in the community for safely performing the operations, including things like, it's important to clearly define the failure domain boundaries and enforce those boundaries. It's also important to roll out the changes uh, slowly, saying like one at a time. It's also important to have actual capacity to save for, the, for any kind of potential physical failures or maintenance congestions. It's also uh, very important to, to con continuously monitor the network. Although we do uh, like roll out changes slowly, uh, you know, the things can really go wrong uh, without you notice slowly. So you need to continuously monitor it. There are also many other best practices explained in the paper and also related work. You can check it out for uh, more details offline. So, Despite those challenges, those best practices are well known, there are a number of challenges we found at Google to enforce those best practices in practice. The first challenge is like it's difficult to isolate failure domains. It's really because the, you know, the team are centralized, they have these global scopes. And also more essentially, uh, the networks really need to interconnect by nature through one, saying that BGP attachment must traverse multiple failure domains. And second challenge is that the system interaction can be pretty complicated and diverse. So considering this three dimension space, uh, with the first axis here being the data plane features we can support, the second axis here being the supported operations, and the third axis here being the subsystem to automate those operations. From here, you can see it's really forming this huge uh, surface space for potential outages. The third challenge is a trade-off between the safety and the velocities. You know, like the fleet size can be pretty large, so we cannot always move slowly for the safety. We need some, uh, enable some level of concurrencies. However, the concurrency also means there are more possibilities you may have the correlated, correlated failures. And this also means that, you know, the velocity can sometimes be at odd with the safety. The last challenge is that uh, it can be costly to adherence to best practices from the software development pr perspective, because we need to train this, uh, the engineers. And also, like, it's, it can also slow down development process if engineers are always considering those best practices all the time. So uh, like we asked the question, like, how do we programmatically enforce the best practices? saying that we don't really want to uh, always rely on human, and also especially a human can make mistakes, right? 
And the second question is like, you know, and we, can we reduce the cost of such programmatic enforcement? In particular, can we reduce the number of systems that need to adhere to the best practices? <coughs> Um, with this, uh, we, uh, we will discuss, uh, today we'll discuss the system Kappa, which is a contentment and prevention architecture. It divides the system into three layers. The bottom la layer here is a production critical system, which uh, involving the actual network control and data plane, that handling the actual application payloads and also doing dynamic rot routing programming when networking have some changes. And the top layer is the operational workflow layer that contains the workflow actual, uh, doing the actual behavior changes based on the business needs, like capacity planning, network modeling, throughout workflows. And this shows an example workflow for the capacity uh, planning. And it starts with like requesting network model, purchase orders, and doing physical installations, and finally pushing your configuration to the devices. And the, the configuration part are really going through this regulation system layer, which in the middle, uh, forming this final point. Uh, so all the behavior changes must go through this regulation system before reaching to the production critical system. And in this regulation system layer, uh, there are the, this read control mechanisms, and it's also continuously monitor the data plane health signals, and it will do a fast rollback if there are anything go wrong. We will cover more details in the next uh, few slides. So how Kappa helped to address the challenge in enforcing best practices? Uh, let's first look into how it helped with isolating failure domains. Um, Kappa has enforcing this low dependencies in production critical system. In particular, only regulation system can make behavior changes to production critical system. And they can only do so uh, through these management interfaces. And there should be no dependencies on other layers are allowed. And within the production critical system, the dependencies are also only allowed within the failure domains. Uh, it it should, shouldn't be, you know, have dependencies across failure domains. We also enforce ICO to prevent erosions over time because like, there may be some accidental changes to network by the operator, with operators, and we want to prevent that. Uh, to summarize in here that this low dependencies and echoes can help to isolate in failure domains and prevent erosions. So next up, talk about this, uh, like the interdomain BGP is really an unavoidable exception for dependency, right? And also it's actually a source of historical uh, correlated failures that we found at Google. So this is really because uh, in the default configuration, the BGP ties together the liveness of data plane and the control plane through this keep alive message. And this is particularly problematic because like the BJP speaker in the control plane is actually can be separated from the data plane switches. So that's saying that you know, when the peers, the BJP peers assume to have been failed, then the routes will be withdrawn in the data plane, even though the data plane are still healthy. So the solution here is we call it false static. So that's saying that when the BJP peers, they fail to connect, uh, instead of like withdrawing the routes, we will using some pre-installed uh, static routes or cache routes uh, to still uh, deliver the packets. Note here that even though these routes may be sometimes suboptimal, uh, you know we still uh, in doing this. We still maintain the capacities and uh, you know deliver the traffic. You know because the data plan may still be healthy. Summarizing here that BGP file static can help to maintain connectivity when facing control plane failures. Next up about the, how we help with the system interactions. So, you know, when multiple workflow make changes at the same time, how do we prevent issues caused by the, the potential interactions? So Kappa has designed with this rate control with two simple but rich policies. And by the way, this is just like one kind of example you can uh, like define uh, in Kappa, you can actually define more policies. So the, the policy is that like, the first policy is that every workflow must request drain before operations on devices. So if anything goes wrong, it, it can minimize the potential impact for the user traffic. A second uh, policy is that uh, Kappa ensure that after workflow uh, drain the device, devices, the total available capacity should still uh, you know, not be below the threshold. So these two policies together, uh, combined together can serve as a summary between workflows. I'm gonna show you an example about how it works. 
So in this graph, on the top, uh, top line here showing what are the maximum capacity in the network, the middle shows like what are the threshold we want to maintain, and the, the difference is the capacity is right, uh, headroom we preserve for like failures or like uh, maintenance congestions. And in this example, there are three workflows. Uh, so let's see the, the first two workflows started and bring down some available capacity as shown in the back axis here. And when a third uh, workflow comes in, however, it will be blocked because otherwise the capacity can be below the threshold. And uh, it will be only allowed to proceed after other workflow has been finished and so on and so forth. So just summarizing here, the two policies I mentioned just now, like they can help to mitigate unexpected interactions and can help to ensure concurrency controls for workflows. But, but again, uh, you probably can define other policies. Um, you know, this is just two examples. So the third challenge I will briefly uh, talk about uh, due to time limit but is about how do we uh, help with the trade-off between safety and policy. So Kappa does not directly deal with the trade-off directly. You know, instead, Kappa providing this centralized places for different stakeholders to define their own policies, uh, where they can negotiate their policies offline, saying the security team may want more uh, like saying safety, while the deployment team may want like velocity. They can uh, de de like discuss and define uh, together the policies, and we provide this alignment interfaces for them to define their trade-offs. So lastly, how we help with like reducing the overhead. So the layered architecture in Kappa allows us to put as much functionality as possible to the workflow layer that does not need to adherence to the best practices. And most of the software engineer will also be in this layer as well. And in the middle layer here, uh, we enforce the best practices at this final point. So summarizing here that this layered designs in Kappa plus this funnel point in regulation system can help to enable the majority of the software system and operators to be not need to adherence to the best practices all the times. Uh, so I also want to briefly mention that this mechanism that I just discussed and not like fully orthogonal to addressing those like categories of challenges, they probably some of them can address multiple challenges actually. So to evaluate our system, uh, we look into the post-mortem data on cluster network in the past few years, and we only consider outages that has root cause related to behavior changes, uh, exceeding 5% package loss, and the more than five minutes. So note here that Google incrementally rolled out Kappa features over multiple years, so it's kind of hard to distinguish between pre and post the Kappa the incident. So in this evaluation, we want to answer two questions. The first question is like, how Kappa can help prevent outages? We will look into the successful stories and also look into some retrospective analysis of past outages. The second question is like, how Kappa helps uh, improve availabilities? And we'll look into this uh, through looking into quantitative studies. Let's first look into one successful story. Um, so in this uh, in these issues, uh, a bug in the modeling system updated, trying to update the old network model globally, and the, the automation workflow initiated a huge number of concurrent operations to reconfigure the switches. They they do so by calling the interface config exposed by the regulation system. And in um, like Kappa helped by you know uh, having this join before operate in place. And also, it limited the concurrent uh, say of the changes, and it also kept uh, monitoring the data plane health. Uh, and then it actually found there is an euro backlog of the operations, and it raised an alert to the operators. And also, in some time, it also blocked the, the workflows. So summarizing here, that the layer separation, the rate limiting, the health monitoring, and the file stop altogether have, have helped to prevent the outages that could have been propagated to the entire fleets. We also did some qualitative study of the past outage by examining which of the Kappa mechanism either were or would have been or still are not applicable to each incident. And this table shows the result, like showing like uh, this uh, red column here shows like how many percent of the incidents we can, Kappa can, can help to prevent it or mitigate. And here you can see that uh, like about 84% of the incidents could have been prevented by Kappa. And also note here that uh, this also shows that each of the mechanisms really is necessary to prevent some categories of failures. 
We also exam, uh, do some quant quantitative study to show like uh, how kappa help with availabilities by looking to uh, you know the other frequencies by examining the number of incidents over the years and also looking to the you know how it helps with like severities by looking to the duration change over the years. And uh, we use the, uh, the, uh, the 2018 as baseline where kappa has not, not been developed. And we normalized according to the fleet size because we're continuously expanding the fleet size. Um, as the, you can see here from the table that the measurement uh, plan related outages have been substantially uh, reduced in both frequency and severity. And note here that 2023, we don't have any like bad fabric outages in the cluster networks and 2024 is still ongoing. So to summarize in here that uh, Kappa demonstrated an approach for enforcing of the best practices programmatically while trying to reduce the cost. And if you have some more questions, you can always email, send an email to this address. And I'm here also happy to take more questions. And if you, are re if you have really, really hard questions, you can send them to uh, Colin and uh, maybe Mokrom, the Googlers uh, sitting right now in the audience. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to take questions right now, yeah.